Pressure is the result of constant molecular collisions. Kinetic, kinetic molecular theory predicts it. Um, so we've got these constant collisions of gas particles with other gas particles and gas particles with the surfaces around them. Right now, you have nitrogen and oxygen and carbon dioxide and argon atoms and molecules bouncing off your skin. We don't notice them because we're so used to them. It's like when you put clothes on. When you first put clothes on, you can feel your clothes, right? But then later, you don't feel your clothes. If you do, it drives you bananas, right? So the pressure is this constant collision. And this makes lots of useful things um, possible. Drinking out of straws, inflating basketballs, breathing. Breathing's nice. If it weren't for air pressure, we wouldn't be able to breathe. Uh, variations in the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere account for differences in weather. The wind, changes in temperature, the El Nino that they say is coming, all of that is due to air pressure. So pressure is force per unit area. So we can write that out like this. Pressure equals force divided by area. So the pressure is going to depend on the area um, and some other things as well. So the pressure exerted by a gas is going to depend on the number of gas particles. So here we have, these look like mason jars um, with gas in them. Here we have one with a smaller number of particles and here we have one with a, excuse me, larger number of particles. Which of these containers is going to have more collisions. The one with more particles. The area of the containers is the same. They're the same size. But if you have more collisions, then you're going to have more pressure. So if you have more gas particles in the same volume, you're going to have more uh, pressure. Pressure imbalance. Um, is what causes your ears to pop when you experience an elevation change. Um, if you've ever gone up the hill to Kings Canyon National Park or if you've flown in an airplane, you've probably experienced that feeling of your ears kind of feel like they have a pressure in them and then you hear this popping, crackling sound. And if you experience an elevation change and you've got a cold and your eustachian tubes are all clogged up, it can be quite painful and this is why babies scream on airplanes, is because their ears hurt. What happens is when you go to a, you have this, um, you have an eardrum that separates your inner ear from your middle ear. And when you go to a higher elevation, the pressure outside is lowered, but the pressure inside your head, inside your ear, is the same. And that causes your eardrum to bulge outward, and that doesn't feel very nice. And so you can yawn or chew gum and let that pressure out. And then you're like, oh, that feels better. When you're coming back down, now you have low pressure inside your ear, and the pressure outside is getting larger, and your eardrum bulges the other way. And again, you have to get that pressure equalized. Well, pressure is something that can be measured, and so if you're going to measure something, you have to have units. Um, the simplest unit is called the atmosphere. The abbreviation is ATM, not an automatic teller machine. Um, and an atmosphere is just the average pressure at sea level. It's really a very simple unit. What's the atmospheric pressure right now? It's approximately one atmosphere. Um, the SI unit is the Pascal. We don't use that much in chemistry. The Pascal is abbreviated PA. Um, and that's one newton per square meter. So that falls right in with the definition of pressure as being a force. A newton is a unit of force per square meter, which is area. Pascal is much smaller than the atmosphere. Um, an atmosphere is actually 101,325 pascals. This is not a number you need to memorize. But a pascal, really tiny unit of, of force. Atmosphere, much more useful to chemists. 
Another unit is the millimeter of mercury, which sounds like a weird unit for pressure, right? How can a length of an element be a pressure unit? That's like smelling the color nine or something, right? Just doesn't make any sense. The length of an element? What? Well, a millimeter of mercury comes from the original types of barometers. So there was a glass tube completely full of mercury, and then you invert it into a dish of mercury. Some of the mercury will come out, but atmospheric pressure will support a column of mercury that's 760 millimeters tall, or 29.92 inches. So soda, you could support a column that's 34 feet. Why is this so much different? Density. The density of mercury is 13.6 times larger than the density of water. So a, a column of mercury that's 29.92 inches has the same amount of force downward as a column of water that's 32 feet tall. They didn't make barometers out of water because they were a little bit awkward. You'd need your barometer to be, you know, 35, 36 feet tall or so. And so that's just not real practical. So what they observed with these barometers is that as the atmospheric pressure went up and down, as it does, the height of the column of mercury would vary somewhat. And you could measure atmospheric pressure with a ruler. You just take a ruler and see, well, how tall is the column of mercury today? And so that's where that unit comes from. It's also, you also sometimes see centimeters of mercury, inches of mercury. When the weatherman reports the barometric pressure, they generally use inches of mercury. Um, so 760 millimeters of mercury is equivalent to 29.2 inches of mercury, which is equivalent to one atmosphere of pressure. So here's a table from your textbook. Um, where they summarize these different units. So atmospheres are important. Millimeters of mercury and tor are important. Tor is a unit um, that is exactly the same size as a millimeter of mercury. And it was named after Torricelli, who was the guy who discovered or created the modern barometer. And um, so that's in honor of him. So, you know, really, we should just give up the whole millimeters of mercury thing, but people don't like to give up stuff like that. And so a millimeter of mercury is a tor. There are two different names for the same thing, but you need to recognize both of them. So these relationships down here, um, it's really the same, right? It's just the same number, 760. One atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury, and that's also 760 tor. I would encourage you to memorize that one because it's going to save you a lot of time. But I'll give you pressure unit conversions on an exam. Um, notice that this is exact and this one is exact. One atmosphere is exactly 760 millimeters of mercury, which is exactly 760 tor. So even though the 760 looks like it has two sig figs, it's actually an exact number. I won't try to trick you with that. So we need to be able to uh, do unit conversions with the pressure units. Um, this table can be a little bit confusing because you don't see this equals anything, right? All of these things are equal to each other. So 101,325 pascals is equal to one atmosphere, which equals this, which equals that, which equals this, which equals that. The nice thing about that is there's always just one step when you're doing pressure conversions. So if we're going to convert 1.25 atmospheres to tor, our path is going to be very simple. It's just going to be atmospheres to tor. So we've got 1.25 atm, and we're going to multiply by a conversion factor that has tor on the top, and ATM on the bottom. I go over to the table and I look for the number 
in front of atmosphere. One atmosphere is equal to 760 torr. So 760 torr equals one atmosphere. So 1.25 times 760, um, 950. up here because I ran out of room. Calculator says 950 for how many significant figures should that have? Three. three. Because the starting number had three. So I could put a decimal point there or I could say 9.50 times 10 to the 2 tor. Any questions? Let's, let's do this one. 30.15 inches of mercury is how many millimeters of mercury? 760. Well, 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere, um, and it's equal to 29.92 inches of mercury. You can do this using the, the pressure units. You could also do this by just converting inches to millimeters. So whichever way, makes more sense to you. So we're just going to have 30.15 inches of mercury. And then we're going to have millimeters of mercury on the top and inches of mercury on the bottom. Remember doing this? We cancel the units out. And then we find the numbers in the table. 29.92 inches of mercury is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. So 30.15 times 760. Missed a button. Divided by 29.92. And this one should have four significant figures. So it's going to be 765.8. millimeters of mercury. Any questions? Let's convert a pressure of 173 inches of mercury into pounds per square inch. Well, maybe we should go back to the table real quick and, and see what we need. Um, Pounds per square inch, 14.7 is equal to one atmosphere, equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, equal to 29.92 inches. So here we have inches of mercury, and we're converting, we can go directly to PSI. 173 inches of mercury. So we got PSI on top, inches of mercury on the bottom. We get the numbers from the table. We looked at the table. It was 14.7 PSI and 29.92 inches. 173 times 14.7 divided by 29.92. Um, three sig figs. I'm getting 84.996, so that runs up to 85.0 PSI. Any questions?